I've got to be honest with you, I feel absolutely exhausted. But this channel is about being raw, authentic and truthful. So I've decided I'm still going to make this video, even though I feel like shit. Seasonal Affective Disorder. I think I have that right now. I haven't been formally diagnosed, but I don't actually think it's a mental health condition anyway. I feel, as I mentioned, tired, jittery, anxious, restless, even though I'm tired. Your brain's like still a little bit active, but you, you can't like switch off and get into that rest and digest state, if you like. That's how I feel. Not good, but I know a lot of others out there suffer with it. So stay here as I find out what we can do about it. SAD, seasonal affective disorder, occurs generally during the autumn or fall months or winter months when there is less sunlight. And just like I am now, people can experience low energy, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, changes in sleep or their appetite, and just feelings of sadness or hopelessness. The reduced sunlight in those months is believed to affect the mood regulating hormones and the chemicals that you maybe like the vitamin D you get from it affects the mood regulating chemicals in our brains. So the serotonin, the dopamine that makes you feel good and regulates calmness and things like that. So there is a science to it. Interestingly, according to the National Sleep Foundation, people with seasonal affective disorder often experience disruptions in their sleep patterns like hypersomnia, which can contribute to feelings of fatigue and exacerbate depressive symptoms. Now, it's not just people like you and me that get this. It also happens to animals. Let me tell you a story about a polar bear named Flock. In 2016, a zoo in the UK, Colchester in fact, which is just around the corner from here, made the headlines when they noticed one of their polar bears was showing signs of depression during winter months. The zoo staff found that Flock, who was typically very active, became lethargic, refused to play, and showed unusual signs of behavior, like pacing around in circles. Am I right in saying that's the zoomies or zoom in? That's what people say about their dogs, isn't it? After some investigation, the zookeepers realized that Flock was likely suffering from a form of seasonal affective disorder. Polar bears are accustomed to long days of sunlight in their natural Arctic habit. And when winter hit in the UK, Reduced sunlight and grey skies seem to have a serious impact on her mood. To combat her seasonal affective disorder, the zoo started using light therapy, similar to what humans with SAD use. They set up special lights to simulate the long days that she'd experience in the wild, and it worked. Her energy levels improved and she became more active again. So I don't know about you, but that makes me feel a little bit more normal or a little bit more human, even though it was a polar bear. I think sometimes we can be guilty of forgetting that we're just mammals on this planet. I sometimes look at cats and think, you've got it so right. Why don't we use them as inspiration? Food, sleep, go outside, have an adventure, sleep for 23 hours a day, beautiful. It also depends on where you live too. SAD is significantly higher in regions with long winters and reduced sunlight. So it's absolutely brilliant for me here in the UK, even though it looks fairly sunny out there now. It's been grey, I think that's the first bit of blue sky there's been about two weeks. So great for me and probably great for Scandinavian countries. Which leads me on to the solutions. We can feel it's causing an issue, but what can we do about it? Now we could try light therapy, which involves sitting in front of a special light box that mimics natural sunlight. That's typically done for like 20 to 30 minutes a day, especially during the winter months when the daylight is limited. So that exposure to bright light helps regulate the body's internal clock. And then that helps to boost serotonin levels and reduce melatonin production, which can improve mood and energy. But how long does that take to work? Because I've tried it before. I've sat with one of these lamps from Amazon. I'm gonna put the link in the description. I sat there for 20, 30 minutes, didn't do anything. But then I realized that you have to repeatedly do this each day and the results can come after a few days or even a few weeks. And I think the bigger the light is and the brighter it is, the better. So just remember that. Don't be like me and expect results after 10, 20 minutes. Nothing in life comes easy, does it? Also, vitamin D supplements can help. So where we get loads of vitamin D from the sun, which is great. When we don't have the sun, we don't get that natural vitamin D. I'm not a doctor, so please don't take any advice on dosage. But I know the general 
um, supermarket brands can be like a thousand IU or is it milligrams? I don't know. But I found from my own personal experience, take it or leave it, this advice. But if you go for something a little bit higher, maybe 2,000 to 4,000 IU or milligrams, whatever the, that standard dosage is, then that seems to be a bit better. It also, again, comes down to the quality of the supplement. So ask for some advice from a professional. Exercise can help for a number of reasons. So obviously one being that you're getting outside anyway, even if it's limited or there's cloud cover or whatever of sunlight, but the exercise can boost endorphins and feel good hormones. So that's brilliant. I find as well, so after this, after I film this video, I'm gonna go out and do a really long run and wear myself out. So where I said I feel restless, even when I'm getting into bed, I don't feel tired when I'm going to sleep. So that's why I'm struggling to stay asleep, I believe. Um, and that's really affecting me. So I'm gonna try and wear myself out and then not nap during the day and then later on tonight, just try and feel tired, hopefully. So maybe have a hot shower before bed as well. That Just really try and get into that relaxation state. Another way that we can improve things is less so of a direct solution and it's more so about general well-being and feeling good and that's to get social support. So that could be joining a community, it could be spending time with your friends, could be spending time with your loved ones and family. That's all good but it's important to have meaningful conversations and I think it helps as well to be vulnerable and open up, say how you feel. Others can offer advice but it's also just nice to be open and honest to people and, and build that connection and just have a laugh. I always find that uh, our local run club that I go to, track night on a Wednesday night, you just have it, meet some good people, have a laugh, have a bit of banter, it just makes you feel good. So yeah, I'd recommend that too. Really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you'll probably like my other ones on my channel. I make videos about mental health, more specifically my experience with psychosis and living with lifelong bipolar. Even if you haven't had those things, you might enjoy the videos where I do about anxiety and talk openly and be honest. So yeah, trying to be a little bit raw, like I say, authentic on YouTube, fresh, and sometimes I don't have a solution. So all I can do is share my own experiences and I hope that helps you. So cheers for watching and see you in the next one.